The issues surrounding the energy transition are hugely interesting and have never been more important. The role of the energy outlook is not to predict or forecast how the energy system is likely to change over time. Rather, the role of the outlook is to help better understand the range of uncertainty we face. A key part of BP's new ambition is also to help the world get to net zero. In that context, I hope this year's outlook will be of use to others who are seeking ways to accelerate the energy transition and get to net zero. Much of the analysis is focused around three main scenarios which explore the possible nature of the energy transition over the next 30 years. Although the three scenarios, rapid, net zero and BAU, are by no means comprehensive, they do span a wide spectrum of possible transition paths and outcomes. Today's discussion is built around eight questions. First, the role of fossil fuels, coal, oil and natural gas declines over time, falling from around 85% of primary energy today to between 65 and 20% across these three scenarios. This greater variety of fuels mean that, means that the mix is likely to be increasingly driven by customer choice rather than fuel availability, which has been the dominant driver for much of the past 100 years. Energy demand is assumed to be reduced by around 2.5% in 2025 and 3% in 2050. The majority of this impact stems from the weaker economic environment, but there's also an assumed impact from the various behavioural changes triggered by the pandemic, as people travel less, switch away from public transport into alternative modes of travel, and work from home more frequently. Oil demand falls over the outlook in all three scenarios. The scale and pace of these falls stems primarily from the increasing efficiency and electrification of road transportation. The emergence of fully autonomous vehicles from the early 2030s in rapid and net zero significantly reduces the cost of shared mobility services, causing consumers to shift away from public transport and private vehicles into these so-called robo-taxis. The outlook for natural gas is more resilient in all three scenarios. This more resilient outlook for natural gas reflects two main components. First, the role of natural gas in supporting a shift away from coal in fast-growing developing economies, particularly in Asia, over the next 15 years or so. And second, the role of natural gas when combined with carbon capture use and storage, CCUS, as a source of near-zero carbon energy as the world increasingly decar decarbonizes. Renewable energy increases sharply in all three scenarios led by wind and solar power, shown here in the blue and yellow bars. As shown here on the chart on the right, the strong growth is underpinned by continuing pronounced falls in the cost of wind and solar energy as they move down their learning curves, with solar costs shown here in this bottom set of three lines, close to falling by 60% or more in all three scenarios over the next 30 years. The share of electricity in total final energy use increases in all three scenarios. What's also striking, shown here on the chart on the right, is that the increase in electricity demand is very similar in all three scenarios, growing around by around 80% over the next 30 years. Not all activities can be easily or efficiently electrified, meaning there's a role for other types of energy and energy carriers in a low carbon system, including hydrogen, and bioenergy, hydrogen complements the increasing electrification of the, of the energy system in rapid and net zero by providing energy to activities which are difficult or costly to electrify. The general point here is that the existence of a finite carbon budget means that the longer the world continues on, on, on an unstable path and decisive action is delayed, the more costly and disruptive the eventual pathway is likely to be. 
The famous adage by Rudy Dornbusch was based on an earlier observation from the American economist Harold Stein, which states that if something cannot go on forever, it will stop. When applied to the current unsustainable path of the global energy system, Stein's law has pretty clear and important implications. Sometimes the simplest observations can be the most insightful. As always, the full booklet contains lots more than I can do justice to today. So if today's discussion whets your appetite, please do go online and delve deeper. <laughs>